Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. We're about to begin study in the book of Nahum. Nahum the prophet's name means consoler or comforter. Interesting meaning for that name. Uh, He prophesied somewhere between 660 B.C. and 612 B.C. And his prophecies were primarily directed toward Nineveh, much like Jonah's were before him. Jonah prophesied roughly 100 years before Nahum. And in the case of Jonah, when he prophesied against Nineveh, Nineveh repented. In the case of Nahum, uh, they did not repent. And in fact, the prediction from Nahum was for Nineveh's destruction. It occurred probably in the last year or two of Nahum's prophetic ministry. It was destroyed in 612 B.C. So it um, deals primarily with the Assyrians and the way they've treated the Jews and the fact that God will judge them because of their treatment of the Jews, and they won't go unpunished. And of course, uh, the prophet Nahum lived to see it come to pass. It also has a bit to say about um, God's personality and some of the unique features of God's personality and his divine nature. So let's read now Nahum chapter 1. A prophecy concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up. He makes all the rivers run dry. Bashan and Carmel wither. And the blossoms of Lebanon fade. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. Who can withstand his indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured out like fire. The rocks are shattered before him. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He takes care of those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into the realm of darkness. Whatever they plot against the Lord, he will bring to an end. Trouble will not come a second time. They will be entangled among thorns and drunk from their wine. They will be consumed like dry stubble. From you, Nineveh, has one come forth who plots evil against the Lord and devises wicked plans. This is what the Lord says. Although they have allies and are numerous, they will be destroyed and pass away. Although I have afflicted you, Judah, I will afflict you no more. Now I will break their yoke from your neck and tear your shackles away. The Lord has given a command concerning you, Nineveh, You will have no descendants to bear your name. I will destroy the images and idols that are in the temple of your gods. I will prepare your grave, for you are vile. Look, there on the mountains, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, Judah, and fulfill your vows. No more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed." So, of course, the chapter opens with the announcement that um, uh, Nahum is receiving a vision that targeting Nineveh specifically. It says a prophecy concerning Nineveh. And then he describes the God of Israel in various ways. And these are ways that um, the Lord has revealed himself, perhaps beginning with the revelation he shared with Moses in Exodus and um moving forward in other ways, but verse 2, the Lord is a jealous and avenging God. 
The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. So Nahum is essentially announcing to Nineveh, Yahweh will avenge his people Israel. They may have conquered the northern kingdom and they may have threatened Judah, but God has taken note and um, his vengeance is fierce. He's known for his vengeance. Just ask the Egyptians. He then goes on to reveal a bit of Yahweh's sovereignty over nature and his ultimate power as the deity that all others must yield to. His ways are in the whirlwind and the storm and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up. He makes all of the rivers run dry. The mountains quake before him and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. So he's putting the Assyrians on notice. You have messed with the one true God who is the ultimate God of all things. Nahum then asked Nineveh, who can stand against such a God? He says, who can withstand his indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured out like fire and the rocks are shattered before him. A little insertion, you know, the contrast between the way he treats his enemies. He says, the Lord is good, a refuge in time of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. In other words, um, Ninevites, Assyrians, the Lord is good for the Jewish people. He's good towards them because they worship him and honor him. But you Assyrians, you don't worship him and you don't honor him. So it goes on, this all-powerful God of Israel will destroy uh, those who oppose him. Verse 8, with an everlasting flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into the realm of darkness. Whatever they plot against the Lord, he will bring to an end. And so um, the Ninevites are told there's, there's no hope against this all-powerful God. The Lord then assures his people that he will deliver them from Nineveh. Verse 12, this is what the Lord says. Although they have allies and are numerous, they will be destroyed and pass away. And although I have afflicted you, Judah, I will afflict you no more. Now I will break their yoke from your neck and tear your shackles away. And then Yahweh directly addresses the Assyrians again. Verse 14, the Lord has given a command concerning you, Nineveh. You will have no descendants to bear your name. I will destroy the image and idol that are in the temple of your gods. I will prepare your grave for your vile. And so the Lord is, is digging a grave for Assyria. Now, interestingly, this chapter ends, it closes with a brief prophecy about the future good news for Israel. That term is used in the New Testament and translated often as gospel. Gospel means good news. So this could be a, a messianic inference. But here are the words from Nahum, verse 15. Look, there on the mountain, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. And then it goes on to close this way. Israel, Judah, no more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. And so the, the feet of those who bring good news. Isaiah prophesied very similar words. Isaiah 52, in fact, some of the words are identical. Verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. And that is good news if you're a Jewish person. But the New Testament translates that good news to a, a higher declaration of good news, that being the gospel. From Romans chapter 10, verse 15, declaration by Paul. How can you preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And so Paul is telling the Romans that they have been sent to proclaim the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ. I want to return to a verse and 
uh, just briefly. The Lord is good, a refuge in time of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Friends, that is a universal declaration. Many people go through trouble, and yet the Lord cares for those who trust in him. The Lord is a refuge in times of trouble. Ask um, Noah and his family, for example. Ask Lot. The Lord is a refuge in times of trouble. He does care for those who trust in him. And so, Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you, and we acknowledge that you're a good God. We acknowledge you that there is no God like you. No one can withstand your indignation. No one can withstand your favor. So, Lord, we love you. We honor you. We thank you that you care for us who trust in you. Be with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.